Allow me to just quickly introduce Resolution Circle. Um, what's quite interesting for me is as a, a past academic, I used to have to write a lot of papers to talk at a conference. Um, so it's quite nice to not have done that for a change. Um, Resolution Circle as a company is owned by the University of Johannesburg, but it's a commercial company. Okay, nothing new there. However, what makes it quite unique is that a, it's sort of a, a dual purpose company. One purpose is to commercialize technology. We create new products, and I can talk a lot, a lot about that, but it's not relevant for tonight. However, that's just a commercial vehicle. The real purpose of the company is to in its interns will. All right, so a few years ago, we started the company for the specifically for the students of university in terms of engineering will, the diploma students. And there's a long story of how we got to where we are. Just to give you a little bit of idea in terms of numbers, uh, we started very small, about 20, 30 will students. We've ramped up last year about 100, this year 200, the next year 300. And that will ramp up to 600 world students, um, which then takes, it's basically a program we've developed um, in collaboration with the industry. Obviously, if you have six students, you just take them and you work with them as a mentorship kind of program. If you have 200 or 400, you need a bit more formal program in, in that regard. So we've developed a program around this um, I haven't spoken to the university about the program. We work with industry because that's what's necessary. Um, effectively, we identified about 17 skills areas that sort of common to industry and that ticks all the boxes for all the universities. And now we employ the students, and I have to say employ, they are employed here, all 200, 300 of them. Um, they get paid. And then they go through a process. Now, there's two sections in this training program. The one six months, um, they really go through a workshop. So we have a 300 seat workshop on the other side of the city with just everything. It's about seven or eight, uh, let's just call it artisan type areas. So it's carpentry, plumbing, electric electronics. And in our case, we don't discriminate. Everyone goes through everything because really what we found is a lot of our students um, coming from universities are first generation, rural, most of our students from Polokwane, what we've seen, um, haven't had electricity in the house and now electrical engineering. So we had to do something there. So in that sense, for six months, they spend in the workshops around the P1 side. Most of you will know what I'm talking about. And then the second part, the P2, they'll spend in this building. So you can see the P1, P2, you're now in the P2 building and the P1 building is on the other side. And there they have to do projects, and this is where we start engaging with industry. Um, we, develop pro we develop products, we do services. So currently, just for the last year um, that we've been operational, I say last year, this is a project that's been in the making for about three years. Um, we had to establish everything and so on, but last year we've been operational. We've already have 40 products in the market, 22 patents, um, all developed. Now, obviously, you can't just have students working on this thing. No customer will ever talk to you about that. So our program calls also for professionals. There's about 140, 130 professionals from industry. Uh, in this company, you're not allowed to publish because we patent and we work commercial. It's not an academic environment. You get fired if you don't do your job. Um, you work with artisans, you work with technicians, you work with engineers. There's real customers at the end of the game, real paying customers. We don't do discounts, it's full service, uh, service to the industry. But obviously you have to do different services. So yes, we do product development on the one side, we do manufacturing, small scale manufacturing. But then also uh, things like maintenance, technicians need to do maintenance. So we're starting to do all the maintenance for the university. We're now in discussions with the city to do maintenance as well. I think the program's now expanded. We're now training about 3,000 matriculants in terms of basic skills and then starting to use them. Just a little bit of background as well. We spent about, I was head of school a few years ago, um, electrical engineering, when I inherited the problem. 
and we looked at a model of how can we get our students or help our students because a large portion of them were still couldn't find placement in industry and I think I'm sure it's a, a theme across the uh, around here what we you'll talk about for me it's a big problem because I think getting someone through school through university with all the debt and then kicking them out is it's actually the worst thing for me um, so at that point we looked at the uh, model and uh, I spent about two years, I was quite lucky at UJ, they were sending people across the, the globe and I could actually look at different models. We borrowed a little bit from Silicon Valley and a little bit from Asia and Singapore and, and, and Europe and so on. And sort of concocted this model out of that, not taking over but just elements because you have to be contextual, you have to work within the context of this country, the laws, the BE laws the job, the labor relations and so on. So this model was designed around that and um, we were quite fortunate uh, the university <laughs> fully supported us and said so go raise the funds. So um, it was about 400 million rand later, okay this is where we are and uh, we were quite fortunate that the National Skills Fund supported this. So I need to give credit where credit is due. However, the model asks no support. So we had a capital injection, we built, which was great. I mean, any company that can start with a zero capital cost is very great to start with. But at this point, we have, we received no funding from any government or university or whatever. Every month's salary has to be paid by this month's income, which for me keeps us really focused on what we should be doing um, in terms of not trying to do academic things, but trying to work and create an environment which reflects what industry is doing, because it is industry. Um, I'm quite enthusiastic about my topic, but I think as I said five minutes, so I'm going to stop maybe <laughs> at this point. But it's quite interesting, I think we have the most sophisticated idea to bark at facility here. You can bring in any idea, and we can make it for you, especially with all the engineers and so on around the industrial design. And then we can also make the first hundred or thousand. Obviously, they support small companies, so that's a lot. There's an incubator. If you go up one floor, maybe you should do that. It's quite a nice incubator. There's the facilities. We have a small-scale production facility at the other side of the city where we can really take, make molds, do anything. I know that Tivitz will be interested about this as well. Um, so we can make from plastics to metal and whatever you need to make. And then this side, we have all the equipment to really design everything from a design to prototyping right through to, to, to well, further. So my purpose is really to, to drive the manufacturing industry. We hand over to the manufacturing. Last night we had the plastics essay here because just giving the students a job for a year to get the diplomas half the job. It's, it's, it's not, you, you haven't done the full job yet. The next job is to get them in a job, in a sustainable job. And I believe that helping the manufacturing industries, medium-sized companies and so on, will drive that. Maybe before I run this, any questions before I leave? If anyone wants to speak to me, I'll be around. Thank you very much. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.